Good morning, welcome back to another video and today we are going to be going over how to get the long boy. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, so a lot of you guys want to know how to get hold of the long boy, so basically we're going to carve this up into a few different types of sections, going over how I've made my 5 million gold in order to get hold of my long boy, which means how I managed to do it. I went through pretty much everything I did last year in order to get a hold of my long boy and which were the most profitable ways in which I could go about doing that. We're also going to be covering over which different types of methods that you should be using in order to get a hold of the long boy. We're going to be cutting out all of the stuff that is more of a long game than as opposed to a short game because we don't have a lot of time when it comes towards getting our long boy. We're looking at Shadowlands being released in early November which means there is not a lot of time to get hold of the long boy. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. Now starting off with a refined method of going through all of my stuff, which is inscription. Now number one is inscription for all of my stuff that I actually did to get a hold of my long boy. And the things that provided the most profit and was the most valuable for me with inscription was Vantis runes. Now the Vantis runes that you're going to be wanting to craft are the Nihilotha one, the Waking City. You can get this by doing Nihilotha on your inscriptionist. Now other than that you will want to have the Vantis rune for the Eternal Palace as that is still in use. Now Vantis runes can be crafted pretty damn cheaply if you get them to at least rank 2 that is because there is a reduction of the material costs for the actual Vantis runes to be created. Now Vantis runes still sell at this moment in time and it is definitely worthwhile to, in order to get hold of even your rank 1 and just start crafting these things. Now for obvious reasons we'll be going over how to get hold of those different types of materials for a cheaper cost as well to get you more gold into your bags and and that means that you're going to get more gold faster overall. Now the next thing you're going to be wanting to do with your inscription is by getting into glyph making. Now if you are a noob towards gold making and you don't have a full set for your inscription, the ones that you should be getting is your legion ones. You also need to get a hold of your BFA ones. These are the primary glyphs that you should be getting. All of the other old world ones, great if you have them. If not, don't worry about it. Just focus on the legion and the BFA ones. These ones tend to have the most of the glyphs that actually sell on the regular and providing that like things like Glyph of the Sentinel, they sell relatively fast and they're at a huge profit margin when you're actually selling and making glyphs. So things like that is what you've got to be wanting to focus on. From that, focus on your Legion and BFA glyphs and if you don't have any of the others, don't worry about it because we're going to be getting on to the next one, which is contracts. Contracts. Okay, this one's for reputation, of course and most people are trying to finish off BFA by either unlocking their flying at the moment and also unlocking all the other different types of things. This is so you can get like revered or exalted and the contracts that you want to make your highest priority to sell are the Rust Bolt Resistance one, which you can get from the Rust Bolt Resistance, your Totolan Seekers, as that's one of the hardest reputations to get up, and also the Alder Accord contract, and also your wave blade and a cohen now these ones are the four highest priority ones that you need to be crafting and that that is definitely a must when it comes towards your absolute contracts it, that you're going to be doing so they're your base minimum they're the ones that you have to be crafting and all of the others if you can craft them for a profit do so but if not don't worry about it, just focus on those ones as most of the other ones are still done. Now the other types of things that you should be crafting with your inscription which have a high sell rate and also provide you with a lot of profit are things like Tome of the Quiet Mind and Tome of the Tranquil Mind. These are from Legion and BFA respectively and this is so, this is a fast selling item for like resetting certain things and basically you need to be crafting these and have them on the auction house at all bloody times. Now this one takes a little bit of an investment to actually get started but it's definitely worthwhile as you will start to pull in additional gold with that. 
The next thing, other than that, when it comes to inscription, is your war scrolls. War scrolls, you need to craft every single one. So that would be the intellect one, that would be that would be the battle shout one, that would be all of them. You need to craft all of the war scrolls if they are at a profit and make sure that you always have at least a bare minimum of 100 on the auction house. This is what I actually tended to do with inscription and this provided me with a lot of gold. The thing of note out of all of the inscription stuff was Vantis runes. At this moment in time it has fluctuated more along the lines of war scrolls. So make sure that you keep your Vantis runes restocked at, a high, at the highest priority as well as your war scrolls. This is so that you can always be pulling in regular gold and profit when you're actually using your crafting. Bearing in mind when it comes to inscription, you need to be restocking on the daily. This is not something you need to be messing around with. Now, coming in at number two, we have milling. This is another thing that I did quite a lot, and this goes very well into inscription as it is a part of inscription, so to speak. Now, the things of note when it comes towards milling is Dreamleaf. Dreamleaf is a great way in order to get a hold of sallow and roseate pigments. Now that being the case, Dreamleaf is always the best one because of the Nightmare Pods that come along with this. The Nightmare Pods give you additional roseate and sallow pigments and is by far one of the most easiest ones in order to flip. Now alongside this you can buy these off of the auction house or you can farm this up in the dark cart thicket on your herbalist if you want to really reduce the cost. What you're going to be wanting to do with those roseate pigments and, and also those sallow pigments is by using that to craft your legion glyphs and that is through your ink trader as well, if you have any other glyphs or older world glyphs that you can sell on the auction house. Do not buy the inks and sell them on the auction house from the ink trader because those ones take a lot longer to sell as a lot of inscription people know about the ink trader. It's only really the noobs that will actually buy those, so they're more of a low frequent seller. So what you're gonna be wanting to do is buy using the ink trader using that for your dream leaf milling and then getting a hold of cheaper inks so then you can actually produce those at an even cheaper rate for older world glyphs. Now when it comes towards your roseate pigments and your salad pigments you use those to craft your legion glyphs and any of the others you can also then just flat out mill dream leaf and sell those on the auction house for a profit. Now the next one that you want to be doubling down on when it comes to milling is your Winter's Kiss. Now Winter's Kiss is usually the cheapest of all of the BFA herbs, as on an average of course, but you may want to double check this, like things like Riverbud do fluctuate a little bit lower than Winter's Kiss every now and then, and it's basically finding the cheapest herb on the auction house for BFA, and then mass milling that. Basically that's going to give you a 10 ton of ultramarine pigments and crimson pigments viridescent pigments and that's basically what you're going to be getting from that. Now what you're going to be wanting to do with this is by crafting them into their inks respectively and then using them to craft things like your war scrolls, your tomes, your contracts, all of that stuff. Now for obvious reasons you can always do this to reduce the cost even more so then you can pull in more profit from what you're actually doing. Bear in mind that ultramarine pigment and ultramarine ink is pretty much not worthwhile to actually turn into their inks unless you're really wanting to squeeze every last penny. I wouldn't recommend it. I would just buy the ultramarine ink out of there and focus on doing something else and then sell the ultramarine pigments on the auction house just flat out and let someone else do that. Or if you have a little bit of downtime, then you can just always just stick it on craft all and then you can get some ultramarine inks through that but the ones that you want to be making into inks is the viridescent and the crimson ones for your glyphs and your contracts and, and also basically everything that we listed above vantis runes your war scrolls that is basically what you need to be doing on that front now going into the next one that you should be milling is your xenanthid coming in with xenanthid it's the most easiest one to actually mill and make a profit now there are two methods in which you can actually do this and that is by mass milling xenanthid for the maroon pigment which then you turn into maroon ink and then you can either use that to craft your BFA stuff 
and also you can sell that flat on the auction house as maroon ink sells relatively fast. Now I actually did this the other day and I can actually do quite a lot of these. Basically, I just buy Xenanthid, turn it into maroon ink and sell it on the auction house and I usually make around about 15% profit on top of that at a minimum. It's definitely well worth your time and I cross reference this by using the worth it add-on which is coincidentally my add-on. But other than that guys, that is pretty much what I have for number two. The only thing of note that I have actually written down in my little script right here is don't flood the auction house with loads of inks as you will drop the price of the inks on your auction house and therefore you will lose gold. So just don't flood the auction house with inks as you will then not caught have any profit in the longer run and that is so you don't tank the market. Number three for what I did to actually get hold of my long boy and that is two times four farming. I did a lot of two times four farming and the farms that you should be doing on two times four is Golden Mane in Stormsong Valley. This one is for a mount but also it gives you a load of raw gold to go with this. So even if you don't get your golden mane for the first hour, you're at least going to get yourself about 5,000 raw gold. This is definitely well worthwhile and it also provides you with a load of tide spray linen in order to make expulsum for your inscription. So you can see how that works in tandem. So you, even if it takes you a while to get hold of your golden mane, you still got Ty Spray Linen. And that goes with the other farms, which are the Terrify Pack Mule, which is located in Drusvar to farm up. That is obviously another mount. And also the Dune Scavenger in Voldoon. All of these ones drop Tide Spray Linen for your expulsum and also a hefty amount of raw gold to supplement you actually farming all of this stuff up. So you can see how this all correlates together in order to maximize the amount of gold you're gonna be pulling in. The next thing of note for two times four farming, and that is some material farms, and that is volatile water in the Twilight Highlands, and also the volatile fire farm in Mount Haijiao. These ones are definitely the ones that you need to be doing on a two times four at a bare minimum that is so you can produce yourself with a load of materials as 2 times 4 farming always provides you with more materials than you would on a solo farm. This is why I would suggest if you're going to be farming at least volatile water and not volatile fire, do it in a 2 times 4 farm and that will produce you with a lot more gold in the same amount of time is definitely something you need to be focusing on on those two times four farms they're very very simple and very very basic so you shouldn't have a problem with that and along with the mount ones tide spray linen for your expulsion so it moves into your in inscription to make more gold with your inscription and also you have your chances of getting hold of the mounts that sell for anywhere from around about 100,000 gold all the way up to like 250,000 gold. They're massive chunks to actually be farming and doubling down on. I made a, at least around about 1.5 million just from two times four farming the mounts and the, this was in a nice amount of time invested into it. So be prepared that you may not get it in the first few hours if you do decide to go with your two times four farming. But however, if you don't put in the time, you're not gonna get the gold. That is basically the bottom line when it comes to two times four farming. Lastly on our list, the main contributor to one of my ways, and it's a very, very simple method, it is material farming. But a lot of you guys ask, what material should I be farming? Well, I've comprised a list, and that is fell iron ore. I know, fell iron ore, it's a BC material. It sells relatively well thanks to the corium ore that comes along with it. That one is located in Terracar Forest. The next one is dark iron ore. Now this one is farmed up in molten core, and also we have the next one, which is elementium ore, which is from Aldham. Now these mining farms are relatively easy to do and we also have some herbing ones as well and that is cinder bloom in Mount Hyjal that is used for your potion of treasure finding so you could always craft those but to be honest I would just sell those flat on the auction house. The Xenanthid is the next one, which is in Najratar. This one is heavily multi-boxed, 
but if you do run counterclockwise to the farming routes. Now, if you're looking for a different type of route than all of the multi boxes are using for the Xenanthid farming, I would highly suggest going over to Golden Roots' channel where he specializes in doing different types of routes for different farms and he always provides perfectly good farms that you could do as opposed to the conventional methods to actually get a hold of your Xenanthid and still provide you with a strong gold per hour with not a lot of competition. The next one that I would recommend is Ajara's Veil. Vale. Now this one is a medium end seller so, so this means it's going to sell at least like every four days don't worry, it's not that hard to actually farm up. You just go over to Vashir and you just run around the Abyssal Depths picking up all of your Ajara's Veil. Vale. The next thing of note is a very, very simple one, and that is by going over to Tiragard Sound and farming up as much anchor weed as you possibly can before you are bored to tears. This is still an exceedingly good method in order to make regular gold and fast gold because it's current content, it's always needed and you can always use that. Coincidentally you can always use the material farming and then crop mass milling that into the inks and pigments for your inscriptions so you can see how that works together as well and that would be considered as a farming to craft method. The next thing that I would actually say is for you skinners out there, dredge leather in Najatar for the rubbery flank as well. Now this one is definitely one of the best farms, obviously you can also do a subsidiary one which is in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms, but preferably I would say still Najatar is one of the high profit ones that you should be doing. Next one is the exotic leather and, and that is on the Isle of Giants, that means that you need to be farming this basically for an hour and you get a hefty amount of exotic leather and also giant dinosaur bones which are always in need for getting a hold of that bone white primal raptor mount. The next thing that you need to be doing with your exotic leather is either see, see if it's worth shuffling into your magnificent hide, if not sell it flat on the auction house. This is literally like a two second job by just looking into your leather worker if you have one. If not, don't worry about it. Just sell them flat on the auction house if you don't have a leather worker. Now, the next one is Savage Leather and this one is in Aldham and this is the Crocolisk farm. Basically, all the baby Crocolisks are located in the bottom and this is so you just basically attack the eggs and you just start skinning as fast as possible. You need the Dark Moon Fire Water for all of the farms I have just listed. This is a must for all of these farms as you want to be spending, you want to be getting as many materials as you possibly can in the same amount of time. Now, the th things of note that I've written down on my script today is Basically, make sure that you have TSM for posting on the auction house and grouping all of your items for certain crafts and all that. The next thing of note is download worth it. Basically, my add-on actually tells you what a gold farm is worth by gold per hour wise. So you can see how fast it's gonna sell using the sell rate and also on average, how much it's going to actually be selling for for gold per hour, specifically for your server. This is so you're not wasting your time with a farm and you can double check all of the farms we just listed above to see if they're worth it on your server. Next things of note is I wanted to go over my community and so we could work out a community attack plan. Now this is so community server ratio. Basically I asked everyone yesterday on my Discord which is nearly at 3,000 members and pretty much what I actually received was we have two low pop people on there, we have seven medium pop and 19 high pop. So basically the ratio would suggest that a lot of people are on high pop servers. So we're gonna have to cater our methods to low and medium pop realms. Don't worry about this because we'll be covering all of these bases. Now you're probably wondering where do I start with all of this stuff and Preferably, if you're on a high pop server, what you're going to be wanting to do is by following this diagram on the screen right now, ask you what pop server you're on and it will guide you towards what would be the most profitable and beneficial for you. Now, for instance, if you are on a high pop server, you need to be doing description, enchanting, 
and tailoring. These ones are probably the best ones to use and that is mainly the tailorings for the Expulsum. So just bear that one in mind. And the next things of note is you want to make material farming and your 2 times 4 farming your highest priority things. Do a daily restock on all of your professions and focus solely on your material and your 2 times 4 farming. This is so you can always get profit into your bags as fast as you bloody well can. The idea is to have no BS towards this is basically this is how you should get the gold as fast as possible without any one-off transmog items that you're going to hope that you're going to sell before Shadowlands because that just is not realistic. What I would recommend right now for medium end servers is still use your professions, don't make them a high priority as much. This would go the same with your low pop servers as well and focus solely on your materials and also your two times fours. This is basically the bottom line. You need to farm like a crazy man in order to get the gold you need. If you want to see significant results, you're gonna to have to put the time in instead of just crafting every day and hoping things sell like low-end transmog or high-end transmog because we haven't got a lot of time and we can't give it up to chance in order to get a hold of that gold. You're gonna to have to go with fast selling stuff that actually can yield you still a good gold per hour, but you're gonna to have to put more hours in towards this. Because at the end of the day, if you really are dead set on getting your Brutosaur, you're gonna to have to put in the time. That is the bottom line. Now, the next thing that I would like to talk about now is the community tips. I asked my community who have got Brutosaurs or they're making significant amounts of gold, any pieces of information or tips that would help people trying to get hold of their Brutosaur because these guys do this on the regular and who better to ask of people that do gold making and gold farming on the regular to make gold. So even if you're not a gold farmer but you do want your Brutosaur before Shadowland, so this is information other people, not just me, who are gonna tell you basically how to make some additional gold when doing this. The tips from my community is from Ney, and that is basically potion of treasure finding slash flipping. That would be like flipping like materials, things like flipping through like milling, prospecting, osmanite ore, crafting those into the gems, that type of stuff. What he also said as well was find a form of gold making that you love. Professions are the most likely the best way, which is very true, but transmog can help and raw gold can help. And basically with that being said, professions are definitely a great way in order to get a hold of a lot of gold. You pick a one of the methods actually there, you're gonna be doing a lot of it. So that being the case, you might as well do something that you enjoy rather than something you're just gonna do for the gold per hour because you're gonna to have to do a lot of hours worth of farming in order to get enough for your Brutosaur. The next one is done by one of my gold Patreons, which is Carbon, and my best advice for, for gold making now is diversify. Don't just do one thing, set a routine and a schedule, then you'll begin seeing goals hit. People spend too much time researching and not enough playing. This is a definitely a great tip because a lot of people try and find, oh, what's the next 100,000 gold farm, and pretty much, you spend all of your time just researching something that isn't going to actually provide you with any results when you could have spent those hours that you have been doing for that 100,000 gold farm and you put those into farming things like anchorweed or going along and farming up Xenanthid or put in X farm. Basically, what is there is set yourself a routine every day and stick to it. That means like, even if it's like farm a hour's worth of a herb every single day and then posting that on the auction house, with that being the case, if you don't set a routine or a schedule, you will not see any results and basically you're gonna be wasting your time. At the end of the day, you're gonna to have to put in the time so you might as well put up a routine so you have got that in place in order to provide you with some form of structure when going towards your gold making. The next one is from Nogura and that is have a plan, get organized and a buffer. Basically what we've just stated from Carbon, pretty much make yourself up a plan, even if it's something like so basic, like it's like an hour farm a day, 
just do that. It will work and it will provide you with the results you need. The next thing is ha add a buffer. So a buffer would be something along the lines of something of like a supplementary farm, such as like raw gold farming. So if you are burnt out of one particular farm, at least keep getting that flow of gold in. So do a load of old raids. That would be things like the Hellfire Citadel do it on all difficulties. That would be all of the WOD raids, the MOP raids, basically anything that will provide you with a 10 ton of gold as well and just supplement you with that burnout on those farming. Now the next one coming from our tips for our community is don't give up. It seems daunting but you'll get there and Sayori has actually stated this. Also research, research, research. Watch as many different gold making videos as you can and read as many articles as you can find. Remember your server's market is unique to to that server and what some recommend for theirs may not work for your server know your markets basically use every asset to your ability so that means things like the undermine journal double check yourself on there you can research which different types of methods will actually be working for you such as which types of material farms are doing well at the moment on your particular server now for obvious reasons that's the entire premise of why I made worth it so you could check a gold power hour farm on your server and you can also import and export it from other friends and therefore we'll be getting onto that a little bit later on. But understanding your market is very easy and if you are basically a noob to this, just focus on your current content farming, you will see results. The next one is from ZevZ and that is inscription is making the most gold on my realm. Old glyphs, at scrolls, tomes of the tranquil mind and trinkets are selling hot. I couldn't agree more, it is working for me even still and basically Inscription is by far the best profession in the game at this moment in time if you want to make gold. Alchemy on the other hand is not so good at the moment, maybe on some low pop servers and some medium pops but other than that you should, you should not be using your alchemy and just focusing on your Inscription and also your Enchanting I'm going to throw in there as well if you know how to do Samadam Shuffle which I will be providing a link down in the description in order to do. Now, other different types of ways in order to get a hold of your gold relatively fast, and that is two supplementary methods and one method which, if you have the means, you can do. Now, the one that you need the means to do is boosting. You can do boosting for raw gold for people leveling, and that is you can do the freehold run, and preferably or ideally you should be at least eye level 440 so you'll be able to tank the mobs and also be able to kill them because you're going to be boosting someone through there so they can level up faster people usually on average spend around about 7k gold per level so you, in order to boost someone all the way up you can make 70,000 gold just from posting in trade chat that you're going to, that you're willing to do boosts through freehold so I would recommend actually checking that out as well. That is a damn good method in order to do and I will be linking a description video on how to do boosting because at the end of the day I'm not a master at boosting but I do know someone who is and I've put his video down in the description down below if you want to do boosting. That is a surefire method in order to get some quick gold as everyone's trying to level up and all that jazz and get themselves all geared up. Now aside from that, the supplementary methods that are not meant to be your highest priority to do, these are things that are supplements. They are not for just making pure gold. You, sh you should not be investing all of your time into this. And that is like raw gold, for instance. Raw gold is good and all, but you could definitely get more gold overall if you a herbalism farm for an hour instead of spending like an hour doing raw gold farm. Now I know raw gold is nice, it's in your bags, but if you actually farm up herbalism or mining or skinning, you'll make more gold for that hour invested. It's all about time efficiency 
and at the end of the day and if you want to be more effective with your time you will need to go with your professions and also your material farming. Now raw gold is a great supplement if you are suffering from a little bit of burnout from this and God knows I know how it feels when you've been farming one particular item for at least 20 plus hours. I understand it is daunting and it is very mind numbing so it is nice to supplement with something else and that should be your raw gold farming. Now there are some great videos out there for raw gold farming. Personally I like Comlet's videos because Comlet's awesome, he does very in-depth guides for raw gold so if you want to do use those as a supplementary method go for that over to Comlet's channel. Other than that, Battle Pets. Battle Pets I have actually listed on here because they are a okay way. Basically, unless you are able to farm and level competitive pets, so if you do battle pets on the regular, like if you currently do battle pets every week or something like that and you're already set up, I would recommend doing your battle pets as a supplementary method as well. If you don't play battle pets, and you don't use them on the regular and you don't know what is competitive to level and all that stuff and to farm don't bother doing battle pets at this moment in time we're trying to get the gold as fast as possible and you do not want to be wasting your time trying to learn a new market when you could be farming materials two times fouring or crafting on the auction house we're trying to get as much gold as possible so unless you know battle pets do not bother is basically my bottom line for this and that is basically what I have for the video for today what I'm planning on doing is this is a mission Brutosaur basically in my discord I'm setting up a new group chat pretty much if you are aiming for your Brutosaur and you require some help I will be on there pretty much all the time and I will try and answer as many questions as I possibly can that you have. So along with that, I will be providing everything I farm up, such as my worth it exports, so you can see what gold per hour is for a farm I've just done, so like royal jelly, you are free to grab those. Also along with that, you are able to get a hold of the guide that I've literally just wrote yesterday on how to get your Brutosaur, no BS. It, if you do this, you will see returns and you'll see results. If there's anything, I just want everyone to get their Brutosaur, as many people as possible to get their Brutosaur, and I want to help everyone as much as possi I possibly can get their 5 million gold for their Brutosaur mount. Aside from that, if you do have your Brutosaur and you do want to help out, Basically, post a screenshot in the Discord of yourself on your Brutosaur. I will give you a, a specific role of, Bru of Mission Brutosaur. And basically, this will show other people that you have your Brutosaur and you are willing to help other people get their Brutosaur. Being the case, I would urge you guys to share this around because I want everyone to come together as a community and help each other out hit the 5 million gold mark and get those Brutosaurs. This is a no BS way method. This is a no BS method. This is, these are the facts. This is what you need to do. Now go do it and do a lot of it. If you need any help, come over to the Discord and we shall try and see if we can help you any way we which can as a community. Aside from that, for the next couple of days, I will be doing some informative videos to actually help you guys get an understanding on other different types of things such as to watch or like people of notes that you should be following in order to specialize in a specific field to make a lot of gold. Also along with that, what is working for the community to make gold at this moment in time and an array of different videos coming up. So if you want to, you can either subscribe or I will post those in the Discord every single day. Now aside from all of this, that's pretty much all I have to say for the video today. I'm gonna get crack a in and start working on more stuff in the future so we can all hit that five million gold mark and get on with gold making. Other than that guys, have an awesome rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video which will be tomorrow.